how about this? Uh, in this, it takes time to build a team. Let me talk to team members for just a second, okay? Those of you who are not the leader, but you're on the team, let me just talk to you for a second, okay? Um, we need you to think like a leader. On our staff team, uh, we started calling this 360 leadership. Um, I've heard John Maxwell talk about this. I think we kind of stole it and kind of made it our own. Um, so I don't know if this is how he defines it, but for us, we're trying to make sure if something is put in your hands, don't just think from one angle. Think from all the angles. So for, uh, let's take something simple, something simple. Hey, we've got sign up for Cherish. Uh, that's the name of the conference, right? Women's conference. We've got sign up for Cherish Women's Conference. Uh, it's going to be amazing. We've got sign up uh, in our lobby uh, for, for Cherish. You're, you're in charge of it. And you go, okay, great. All right, I'll, uh, I'll get a table and I'll get somebody there to uh, take people's cards or take their payment. Boom. I called somebody. I, they're going to be there on Sunday. And that's it. But you don't think, what should the table look like? What should it feel like when people are walking up there? How many people are going to be walking up at one time? Is this going to be one person? Or will they have multiple people there? So if we have multiple people walking up at one time, it's going to have one long line? Or we're going to have three people there that can actually receive payment from people so that the line is not too long so people don't feel like they have to leave? And then after they leave, I'm going to make sure that, that they are followed up with to make sure, does the email, is it, does, it, does it work? When they, when they come to sign up, does, does the actual payment, does, does, does it work when they're going to pay to come? Or am I just going to hope that it works when, when they show up there? Am I going to test it before they come? Am I going to get a whole little test? Like, I'm trying to get you to look at the situation and not just go, oh, we've got sign-ups on Sunday. I need you to actually see it all the way through to the end. When I give it to you, am I still thinking about it? Because if I'm still thinking about it, then you're not leading the way I need you to lead. Is that too harsh? Some of the leaders in here are like, yeah, thank you for saying that. <laughs> Let me say this other thing with the building a team. Every one of us are in transition. Every one of us. Not one of us will be in our position of authority forever. Not one of us. Every one of us are in transition. Since we are in transition, and now for some of us, we're just getting started, that transition might be 40 years from now. I get that. For some of us, it might be a little bit closer. Since all of us are in transition, all of us have to have a next. You have to have somebody that you're like, yep, I'm going to pass it on to you. What I have found out is that even Jesus picked 12 and one of them didn't work out. So you usually need to have more than one. You usually need to have a couple of people that are like, hey, I'm raising these folks up to help me carry this vision and push things forward. Number four, your greatest competition is your own potential. Your greatest competition is your own potential. It's not the church down the road. It's not the government. It's not your spouse. <laughs> Your greatest competition is your own potential. Stop measuring yourself against other churches and de deciding whether or not you're valuable based on the size of your church or the size of your budget or the size of your team. That is irrelevant. The question is how much potential has God put on the inside of you and are you being true to what he's put on the inside of you? Are you maximizing who he destined and called you to be? And if you can begin to maximize who he's called you to be and you can step fully into what he's put on your life, then you, my friend, are being a success. When he gave the one talent, the two talents, and the five talents, he didn't say to the two talent guy, how come you didn't get more? He took what he had and he multiplied it. I just need you to take what you have and multiply it and stop comparing it to everybody else. Man, the quickest way to kill something special is to compare it to something else. 
can have something beautiful and significant and wonderful. Then you compare it to something else and go, well, it must not be all that great. What God is doing in you is beautiful and wonderful and special and it's needed and there will be people that will be in heaven as a result of your yes. So thank you for stepping up and being who God has called you to be. We don't need you to be on the largest stage and stages in order for you to be significant. We need you to be faithful and fruitful where God has planted you and if you will do that, you'll hear well done, good and faithful servant. Let me keep on going here so we can get rid of the, get rid of the clothes. Right vision and the right time and the right person creates momentum. Right vision 